in this video. I am cooking a couple of things, starting up with some quesadilla. First, I am going to cut tomatoes and dice them nicely into smaller pieces that could easily be put in a coconut wrap. So I first use my tomato knife, as you can see in this video, in this segment to slice the tomato sideways and across. I'm doing it very carefully so that the whole tomato does not fall apart prematurely. And then cutting it one more time, creating those almost square pieces that are small enough to tuck in a coconut wrap to create a somewhat of a taco shell. I'm just putting the tomatoes into the glass bowl just like that collecting every single piece and then slicing the other tomato first sideways making sure that the slices are as even as possible as parallel to the cutting board as I possibly can cut. Now going in across, creating long slices now, and carefully maintaining its shape. And finally going the last step, dicing the tomato in smaller pieces. It's kind of hard to keep the slices intact at this point, so the last part is just slicing them one by one. Depositing it into a glass bowl again, like that, collecting every piece, and just going to take a little bit of the paper towel to get rid of the seeds and the extra moisture to prepare the board for the next step which is to cut the onions. This is half of a red onion. And I'm just slicing the onion in slices that are about one-eighth inch thick, maybe. Turning it sideways and and carding, cutting it into smaller pieces in somewhat of a rainbow shape, so that each piece is mm, a little bit the same. Mm, putting it into the glass container again. I decided that uh, I only need a quarter.
quarter of onion here and now I'm just taking a chopstick to mix the tomatoes and onion together and just separate pieces of onion that are still stuck together like that all right I'm just collecting a few other pieces and the rest of the onion is going back into the plastic ziplock bag clearing out the rest of the board and then taking out cheese I'm going to slice it into about eight one eighth of an inch slices I don't have the the food processor nearby so I can't really chop it even thinner but this is gonna be good enough because cheese is going to melt alright, this is actually cheese that I shared with you before in my video um, with unboxing of my cheese shipment it was a good cheese actually although I am transitioning to more vegan style vegan stuff so this is probably an excess that I have now let's switch to my stove where I I'm going to first put a little bit of flavored salt into the mixture and mix it together in a glass bowl and just like that and then put it aside turn on my stove and take out my coconut wraps tortillas I'm going to open it up and take one out just like that spray some olive oil in the pan like that and then Put a tortilla into the pan right on top of the sprayed oil I'm going to put some of this mixture with a spoon onto one side of the tortilla and just spread it evenly a little bit more all right putting the glass bowl aside and putting two slices of cheese on top like that going to Put the other side right on top of it, creating a taco shell. Then take out another piece, another wrap. I'm just 
the same thing with the tomatoes. Putting a little bit more this time. And again, two slices of cheese. And then fold it over like that. I'm going to move it a little bit closer to the first one to create more space for the other two I'm planning to make. Here's another one. Now I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to put more tomatoes and onion mixture right on one side of this tortilla and distribute it evenly, spread it the pieces apart and put two slices of cheese really kind of moving the tortilla closer to the other two this one doesn't stick right away, but promise you it turns out okay. Last one is the most challenging one. I'm gonna put more. I'll we'll have some left over, but it's okay. Like that. Spread it as on the other three and put the remaining cheese on top fold it over and just like the other ones very good and they've been frying for a few minutes they're ready to be flipped. Look at this color. Very, very nice. Some of the cheese has spilled over. Imagine how delicious this is going to taste. Oh, look at this color. Beautiful, nice and crunchy. And these are stuck together, so I'm just separating them. Now it's stuck to my spatula here. I'm using my knife to separate it. Very good. Now I'm trying to flip this. Hmm. Like that. Fold in the extra tomatoes that fell out. It's okay, every single tomato will be rescued. No worries there. Tuck them all in. And just pat them slightly so that the other side gets the same color. And cheese gets stuck to both sides of the tortilla wrap. Perfect. Now cover it up. And just wait a little bit longer. Oh, nice. All done. Take them out. Make sure that all the cheese is saved and place them on a plate like that. Alright, last one. Yes, that's it. Look at this. Amazing. 
next thing I'm going to do is make my favorite kale salad. This is the evening of the same day. I'm just preparing for the next day's lunch. I buy kale and then to make, to keep it fresh, I cut off about one quarter inch from the ends and then put it in water in the fridge and this kale can last for a long long time at least two weeks in the fridge you could see how crisp this kale is right now and it's been in my fridge about a week now Alright, so I am cutting the scale into bite-sized pieces and then putting them in a glass bowl. All the kale is pre-washed, so I just drain it and cut the stems away like that, saving each piece of kale. Putting it aside because I will use the stems and then cut the leaf into bite-sized pieces again. Like that. Alright, looks good. And just putting everything in the bowl. And now taking another leaf. And removing the stem. Saving extra pieces. Putting one side on top of the other. And again, slicing into bite-sized pieces. You can also tear it with your hands. But I prefer cutting it with a knife. To create more consistent sizing. Next one, and the same thing. They're straight out of the water, so everything is nice and crisp. None of the kale is wilted at all. And that's one of the benefit of keeping it in water. Um, just like you would flowers. Until you use it. It's very, very beneficial. Extend the lifetime and freshness of the scale for a while. Alright, and then cutting it sideways into bite-sized pieces again. Like that. And then putting it all into the glass bowl again. As unfortunately, this black glass bowl is a little bit small. I typically would use a larger bowl, but I don't have a larger glass bowl. And I certainly wanted you guys to see what's inside. Regular bite-sized pieces. Alright, we stuffed into that bowl as much as we could. Cleaning up the board into the sink. And then, this is what we've got. Now I have boiled water where I'm, I'm putting two cups of quinoa. And this is a combination of regular quinoa and multicolor. 
more organic. Like that. Almost one cup, just a bit more perfect. And putting it right in the boiling water. Alright, closing the jar. Put in the bowl aside and now I want to cut the stems. I'm just going to wipe them if I see any visible water from the washing. And what I do with them is that I'm going to take out a glass container that will serve as a storage container for the diced stems until I'm able to cook them. They're pretty tough, raw but they do become nice and soft when they're cooked. And it's a great addition to any vegetable dish with other vegetables or just by itself with some soy sauce and spices. Definitely don't throw them out. All right. Very good. Cover it up and seal it nicely. And this will go in the fridge later. Lowering the heat and just covering it with a lid. Now clearing the surface. Okay, what's next? Next thing is garlic. I have some organic garlic from Trader Joe's and I will use it for my dressing. So first thing, I'm just going to separate it into cloves. Using my knife. like that. Really open it up and then take each clove. I'm going to use about half of this garlic. Mm, maybe a little bit more since I'm going to be using the dressing for another kale salad later. So I'm going to prepare two portions. So I will now peel the garlic. I know that there are better ways to peel the garlic than what I do, but I'm used to doing it this way and I don't have one of those large knives handy to press the garlic cloves so that the shell separates. Alright, now I'm just going to continue with peeling the garlic, putting it aside. I will use a to chop it later. It's very easy. I tried to use all the cloves, including the very smallest ones, so that there is no waste. And again, clearing up my trusted 
board. Okay. Very good. I'm going to put some remaining avocado oil into the measuring cup. the olive oil I have in smaller bottles. This is, I believe, Greek olive oil. To fill the cup. Alright. And now, put it right into the glass container. Next, I'm opening the jar with the garlic and I already chopped it so that it's not awfully noisy for you guys. And I'm just putting it into the same cup. And I'm going to open it. Take out the blade and then make sure that the all the garlic is taken out again trying to avoid any waste possible all right this looks good putting the blade back in it's quite a bit of garlic you see now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the lemons into half. We'll start with two. I'm going to take out my squeezing tool, lemon squeezer, and putting each half into it, squeezing into the same cup with garlic and then I'm doing the same thing with all four pieces one by one like that and one more I'm going to put two in the same time, so I really get all the juice out, all the delicious lemon juice out of the squeezer, and then cut this uh, lime looks like a lemon, but it is lime. And just do half of it into the container. Alright. Next, I'm going to pour it in with the garlic. Really getting all the pieces. Like that. You can see there's uh, quite a bit of dressing, certainly for two salads. Some mustard, Dijon brown mustard. Just gonna shake it and put about two teaspoons into the jar. And then add a bit of salt. I'm going to actually use a measuring spoon to add my salt. I will need about a tablespoon of the salt. You can add a little bit less if 
you are more of on a lower salt diet, but and then some pepper. Just sprinkle on top. Okay. Next thing is to really combine the ingredients. So I'm going to cover it up and shake it really well. Mixing everything together, allowing salt to dissolve. Put it aside. You know my quinoa is getting ready. So what I want to do next is chop my almonds. Typically I would uh, get some walnuts, but since I don't have walnuts, I'd have to do with roasted almonds. And I'm going to do my best to slice it and with this larger knife in smaller pieces that are more salad bites instead of large almonds. If you have pre-sliced almonds, that's even better much more convenient to do it that way but I don't have that and I use what I've got today and just gathering it all together in one area so that I can chop as many as I can and oh, one and just a one slice one movement of the knife but at the same time I want to uh, be make sure that they are somewhat of similar chunks and they're easy to eat that way just chopping these almonds like that all right last couple of pieces mm, I always have uh, trouble with just chopping things without eating them so I just like to sample that's all nothing wrong with that right all right just a few pieces of almonds end up in my mouth. All right. Very good. Now, just uh, placing the almonds right on top of the salad. Now I'm just uh, moving, kind of mixing quinoa in the pot, making sure it absorbs everything, all the water. And to decrease the volume of quinoa, I'm going to add some, um, to the kale, I'm going to add some quinoa while it's still hot. Although typically you would add it cold or at least warm. But I want to decrease a little bit so that it's more manageable to mix couple of cups typically um, and these are half a cup so totally you will be getting 
or approximately two cups of cooked quinoa on top. And I like quite a bit of quinoa within this recipe, so you can certainly add less or more depending on your taste. And just trying to mix it together. The kale is so fresh, it's not really wilted yet. And in the background, my cat is wondering, what am I doing this time? Just mixing these leaves, trying to not spill as much, but, uh, you know, some spillage, that's okay. We'll manage that afterwards. I'm going to add just a bit more of quinoa. Alright, right on top, and mix it a bit again. Really kind of making sure that everything is well incorporated. Like that. Now it's lo looking a little bit better. And I also want to obviously add a bit of the dressing, shake it up again, and add it, I'm just using the right sprinkle on top, that should be enough maybe, let's see, I'm just going to mix it again. Alright, very good. And come the goal is really to coat all the leaves in olive oil and uh, lemon juice. Maybe just a little bit more. There's some garlic that I really want to incorporate. There we go. Okay. Now it looks much better. You see the volume has also decreased quite a bit. Okay, very good. Looks more consistent. And as it sits in the fridge for a little bit longer, it will become even better. And the kale will still be very fresh, but with time, it will decrease in size. Look at that. Delicious. Take a look at this greenery. Just clearing out. Closing this for the next time. There's plenty of dressing left. Clearing up the surface. Alright. That is what my salad looks like. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care of yourself and be kind. Goodbye.